Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we are a teaching center dedicated to excellence in hands-on training and increasing your didactic knowledge. So we're going to start part one of a cast cold restoration series and this is called Coad and Blockout. And we're going to be removing these amalgams from these five teeth performing a blockout procedure and then I'm going to prepare each one of these for a custom-made cast gold restoration to the situation at hand casting these and then delivering them in the final part of this multiple part series so let's uh, let's get started and I want to show you first of all the burr kit that I would use for this and this is the coad direct restorations kit and the kit has a number of burrs that are very helpful in removing old restorative materials, carries, uh, and getting your extensions so that you can get your preparation ready to go for the blockout or build-up procedure. It even has burrs that are good for removing old crowns. You can see that you've got round burrs and you've got some pointed Fisher burrs, uh, finishing burrs that are going to be helpful for getting extensions, some straight Fisher burrs, and then a whole series of pear shaped burrs that will allow us to remove old amalgam or composite restorative materials. I particularly like that diamond 330 burr there. And then we have a cylindrical burr and a burr that's used for cutting off metal crowns. So you have uh, just about everything you're going to need to disassemble an existing failing restoration no matter what material it is and you also have burrs in here that will allow you to prepare a final direct restoration like a composite amalgam or even a glass ionomer. Coad means clean out and diagnose and the procedure we're going to be doing today is going to focus on exactly that. If you want to get a hold of one of these burr blocks they are available on our website and uh, we'd be happy to provide one for you at a pretty good discount. So let's get started with the 330 diamond. This is called the D232. It's really a 330 diamond. So we're going to start by making a little slit in the defective restoration, the amalgam. The burr is two millimeters in length, so you can usually just use the entire length uh, without concern of going too deep and you can work peripherally to remove the amalgam from the vertical walls of the occlusal. I like to make sure that we do this as conservatively as possible because tooth structure preservation is really paramount to successful conservative cast gold restorations and we're going to want to make sure that we save as much of this tooth as possible. So we're paying attention, of course, to the walls and making sure we get those clean and free of amalgam. And uh, just following the burr to its full length onto the pulpal to remove the existing material. One of the things I think is important is to focus on the uh, DEJ and the importance of getting the DEJ completely clean and free of all stain and restorative materials. In this particular example, we do have a composite restoration on the mesial, which I guess had been placed as a patch of that amalgam, perhaps because of a fracture or maybe recurrent decay on the mesial. And we're going to be removing that as well. And just think about uh, how you would normally prepare a box for a class two and drop the burr down to avoid hitting the adjacent tooth, keeping it internal and trying to undermine the composite and get it to nearly just fall out once you remove the enamel bonded areas the dentin areas usually just flip right out pretty easily. Sometimes a hatchet or a chisel can be used to break away any composite that's uh, sticking to the walls in, in an effort to be a little bit more conservative and avoid hitting the adjacent tooth. I 
just shift the view here a little bit so you can see how we would move the burr laterally and carefully to avoid hitting the adjacent tooth. And keeping the burr basically internal to the box as much as possible and then undermining the composite and allowing it to fracture out on its own. It's a pretty simple process to disassemble amalgam but composite becomes a little more tricky because it's hard to see. We have caries in this tooth uh, and uh, we're now going to shift over to the slow speed and we're going to utilize burrs that are more appropriate for caries removal in dentin which would be round burrs. In this case I'm going to be utilizing a six round burr in the slow speed and using tactile feedback from the burr as it moves into the soft tooth structure. If we need to undermine a cusp and we can get access to the caries, not a problem. If the undermining of the cusp is making it difficult to get the caries out, then there is obviously a need to remove the overlying enamel to get better access. It's probably okay if you leave some undermined enamel because we are going to do a block out and then prepare this for a cast restoration and we'll be removing all undermined enamel during that particular step. So with the first tooth done let's move on to the next four and I just want to show you the clean out of the first molar and then moving on to the premolar and then on to the next premolar and then finally we're going to remove the amalgam on the distal of that canine. So with all of the teeth uh, cleaned out, we're now ready to move on to the first part of the block out, which would be the placement of a liner in the deepest areas. And we have a couple of choices. This is one I like uh, by 3M called Vitrobond Plus. And it is a resin modified glass onomer. It comes in this double barrel dispensing clicker. And I'm just dispensing a couple of clicks here. It's quite expensive. Every click is going to cost you about four or five dollars, so you want to be a little bit conservative when you click away. And this is the other one here called Fuji Lining LC, which is made by GC, uh, another outstanding glass ionomer, resin modified. And you can see that they're slightly different color uh, in, in this particular case. We're going to go to ahead and utilize the Vitrobond product just because uh, I decided to do it today. And this is a CHP MTA spatula. It has a ball on one end which is great for the application of materials including MTA and then on the other side we have a spatula which is really small and uh, great for mixing up materials like this. So we just mix the two pastes together until the color looks uniform don't overmix. Uh, the light in your operatory can cure this material pretty quickly, so just mix it pretty quickly. And at this point, we're going to switch over to the little ball on the other end, which is like a die cal applicator, and place the material into the defect, the deepest area. And if you can just vibrate the instrument against the dentin, the material will release onto the tooth structure. Uh, rather than dabbing it, you kind of rub the instrument against the dentin. So let me show you again here on the first molar. See the, the agitation of the instrument as, as it's touching the dentin helps to disperse the material throughout the, the defect area. I don't think we need to place any liner on the others because they're very shallow. So we'll just go ahead at this point and light cure both of these for 20 to 30 seconds. I, I like to go a little longer uh, to make sure that it's hard and well cured. So here we are at the stage where we're ready to proceed with the block out. And I think it's a good idea to place a bonded block out and for that reason, I'm going to utilize chlorhexidine 2% scrub, and I'm going to scrub this on all of the uh, preparations in anticipation of mitigating MMP uh, activity. And the 2% uh, 
scrub is then uh, either air dried or suctioned or it is uh, blotted dry. You really have your choice. You don't want to over dry these. You don't want to desiccate the teeth. And at this point, we're now ready to move on to placing the matrix uh, bands and wedges. And I just take a couple of uh, old Toffelmeyer style, style matrix bands and uh, burnish them with a large egg-shaped burnisher against a mixing pad and make them into these little C shapes. And then we could apply them pretty easily between the teeth. And you don't need to put a matrix band on every tooth. Uh, we're not trying to reestablish contacts here. We're just trying to create a little bit of separation so that when we prepare the teeth, we're not going to have to worry about a lot of excess material in the gingival areas. And I think that this system works pretty well. The material that I'm going to use for the block out is called Paracore. And this is made by Coltine. It is a cement for crowns, onlays. It's also uh, useful as blockout material. Uh, some people use it to cement posts and then proceed with the buildup at the same time. So it's quite a versatile system. The reason why I really like this is it utilizes a sixth generation bonding system and it has different shades like white, which is really helpful for posteriors and then dentin shade for anteriors, particularly with all ceramic restorations. Where you have translucency you don't want to have too bright white of a material underneath unless you're trying to opaque out a darker tooth and then you have this sixth generation system called parabond now the green bottle is the the etch primer and then the uh, the red and the yellow is a dual cure adhesive system uh, that would be sixth generation so I'm utilizing now the self-etching primer. In other words, this is the green bottle of the three bottles. And we're going to be applying this for approximately 30 seconds on all of the teeth, scrubbing it thoroughly, and then suction dry or lightly air dry the product in anticipation of the next step, which is going to be the dual cure adhesive. And the dual cure adhesive is a mixture of a drop of the red and a drop of the yellow bottle and this is a, a really nice product because it it does cure on its own uh, but I always use a light cure to get the best polymerization possible after thoroughly uh, applying this to all the teeth uh, you don't want to be shy with the material get plenty of it in here then go ahead and then once again either suction it thin or blow it thin very gently and now we're ready to move on to the paracor buildup procedure. Now here's the, the paracor white being injected into the uh, clean, out, clean outs uh, here. If you were going to uh, perform this procedure on the first visit and then have the patient go home you may want to take a little bit more time to get really nice uh, contours on these teeth and good contacts. But this uh, example is a case where we're building or blocking out the teeth and then we're going to be preparing them the same day. Don't add too much additional material. Keep it somewhat either you know pretty well controlled before you uh, decide to light cure. You don't want to have a lot of excess beyond the cable surface margins. And these all get light cured for 30 seconds. Uh, they will cure on their own, but you can cure each tooth. And we're just showing you how we would start that process. After they've been cured, uh, you're going to want to uh, clean off the excess a little bit. And I, I went ahead and did that just to, to make them look a little bit more consistent with the cable surface margin so we can start our depth cuts for the inlays and onlays in the very next video. And I'm going to start with the second molar and we're going to be performing some kind of an onlay. We don't know what kind of an onlay. We need to uh, make that decision as we get inside the tooth and then hopefully do two inlays in the first molar. An MO on the premolar, an MOD on the premolar, and a really cool little DL on the canine. So thanks for watching the video. And if you're interested in a Cast Gold course, we have a terrific three-day course in December. 
this course will fill very fast so my subscribers may want to jump on it pretty soon and looking forward to meeting you thanks so much for your attention <laughs>